It's easy to forget how much care goes into building the guitars we play, and the level of craftsmanship that goes behind our music before we even play a note. My friend Dave Cohen is an inspiring example of someone who has dedicated himself to the art of building guitars. He's the founder and head luthier at Equilibrium Guitars, and I wanted to learn more about his work, so I interviewed him and toured his workshop. I hope hearing from him inspires you as much as it's inspired me. And most of what we're doing will start off in kind of raw cuts like this. We've got um, some figured purple heart right there on the bottom. We've got uh, wenge, walnut, um, mahogany, uh, more walnut over there, uh, some spruce and maple up top. Spruce is used way more for acoustic stuff than it is for, uh, for electric, but we've got a guy right now that wants a very, very lightweight six strings so okay. we're going to be using some spruce in the construction of that and i'm excited cool. to hear the result i'll usually i like to go with a multi-piece construction mm -hmm. meaning not just a single piece neck this is this is like a, a seven or nine piece neck but you get the idea with the you know, multi-piece construction i see yeah when you're able to orient the uh, the wood in such a way that the grain is running uh perpendicular to the strings mm -hmm. also called quarter sawn construction mm -hmm. it adds so much extra stability to the neck that you mm -hmm. barely need to adjust it seasonally. Um, mm. The guitars that I've made that have a single piece neck, they need to be adjusted way more, even with all of the other reinforcements that we do with uh, double action truss rods, carbon fiber reinforcements under the fret, under the fretboard. Um, they still need more work. But so this is this is one neck that goes all yeah. the way down through, and then you attach the rest of the body to it. Exactly, they're called oh, body wings because they're literally like little wings that are attached to yeah. the neck. I can show you the back of this if you okay, want to see cool. how, that, how that looks. All right, cool. We're not totally done with the And so this is the multiple pieces of wood assembled yeah. into one big chunk going exactly. all the way through. All right, cool. I never orange, thought of that. The duck, which is the, the kind of orange reddish wood here, um, which is Asian. And then we have African wenge, which is uh, really, really nice stuff for reinforcements. It's basically like organic carbon fiber because it's mm. so hard and so um, tight grained from end to end. Um, flame maple, more paduck, and a center stripe of purple heart, and then the pattern repeats going to the other side. Huh. So you have to learn a lot about woods to do this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you learn about woods? Um, if you if you understand a bit of acoustics, you can apply mm -hmm. the same mentality to the woods that you're using, and that's one of the things that's so exciting for me as a musician mm. um, and as a guitar maker uh, because I'm not just I'm not thinking of it as well this is going to look very nice as furniture mm -hmm. I'm not thinking of it as something that's just going to be hanging on somebody's wall right. I've purchased this it's done it's a complete thing it's it's a means to an end yeah. everything that we build even if it really looks really nice and has you know, detailed mm -hmm. inlays and everything I, I still consider it a tool right it's a tool for inspiration and if it doesn't lend itself really well to the musical applications of the person getting it, it's not a well-designed tool. Um, and with that in mind, whenever you're you're thinking about the woods that you want to use, mm -hmm. obviously the person who gets it will still have a certain look and a, and a sound in mind, but the flexibility of the wood mm -hmm. uh, lends itself to either more or less compression, which if you're playing very lightly may not be evident, but when you really start to dig in, are are the, the, the treble notes going to spike or are they gonna mm. sag a little bit? Do you get that nice musical thunk when you're playing really fast up that percussive pick attack or is it gonna be kind of spiky and, and, and screamy? And if a wood is, is harder and less flexible, it's gonna tend to spike. If it is um, a little softer and more flexible, it's gonna wanna sag a little bit when mm. you dig in more and it's it's going to everything that you do is going to contribute to that initial string response if you were to play um like if you were to do really high uh like a high lead, right? mm -hmm. um, and you dig in really hard if you were to use a really hard wood for the neck and for the body and the whole thing yeah. you would kind of have this sound okay where when okay. you Whereas if you use a slightly softer, uh, more flexible wood, it's going to kind of thunk. So oh, interesting. Like, do, 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 do. Whenever you have that really percussive, fluid, kind of addictive pick attack, it's usually because you have a slightly more flexible wood in the neck 
And if you build an entire guitar out of really hard woods, it may look gorgeous because a lot of expensive figured woods tend to be on the harder side. Mm. Um, yeah, it may, it may look really nice, but tonally it's going to be pretty edgy and glass. I see. So, That's cool. I never had woods really explained to me before yeah, in any yeah. way that made um, sense. A lot, uh, one of the questions we get asked a lot is, you know, people, you know, people come in and they'll say, uh, you know, does it really make, does the wood really make much of a difference when you're dealing with electrics versus mm -hmm. acoustics? And, um, you know, I can certainly see that it doesn't make as much of a difference because you're, you have so many other things contributing to it. But and just like with anything, when you get to the point where you're really, um, when, when you're comparing 10 guitars across the board that functionally may be very similar, but have these minute details that separate one from the next, you're listening to such such little things that have such a huge impact on you that absolutely it makes a difference. Mm. And if you build the guitar with that mindset, if you really get into the head of the person who's going to be getting the guitar, then everything that you do is going to be pushed in that direction and the end result is going to be ten times the guitar for that person than anything else that they would play.